Hey guys, this is Nick, and today we're gonna take a look at a browser that I've been starting to like more and more. The Brave browser has been started a while ago, and they've always been billed as something based on privacy and respecting the confidentiality of your data. But they also opened their search engine in beta recently. And this prompted the question, is Brave plus their new search engine really the all-in-one web browsing solution that we've been waiting for? Let's take a look at how it works, the browser, the search engine, and see if it's deserving of a crown. Now, speaking of crown, today's sponsor is a real jewel. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider, meaning they provide hosting that you can use to run your own servers, whatever you need one for. I use Linode to host my own Nextcloud instance, but thanks to their one-click apps, you can deploy any type of server in, well, in one click. If you're a gamer, you can easily start your own Valheim, Minecraft or CSGO server. But if you're looking for a VPN, you can also one-click deploy your own using WireGuard or OpenVPN and you can ensure there is no middleman trying to intercept what you're connecting to. Linode is affordable and has consistent pricing with data centers all over the globe. You can upgrade your servers in one click, just as I did on my Nextcloud instance to add more storage, and you have real humans behind it all to talk to, 24-7, by phone or support ticket. Even if you use the cheapest plan available, which is $5 a month, by the way. They also have very detailed documentation if you don't like talking to other human beings, which I know I'm not a fan of. If you use the link in the description to sign up, you get a $100 credit to use on your own servers, so head over there and give it a go. I am certain you won't regret it. So let's begin with the browser itself. Brave is free of charge, it's open source, and it's one of the many, many web browsers based on Chromium. It's got ad block and tracker blocking out of the box, and it's basically made by a company that derives most of its revenue from BAT, for Basic Attention Token. This is a crypto token that we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Brave sells itself as more private than Firefox and three times faster as Chrome, so obviously we're going to test these claims. In terms of settings, Brave is one of the most comprehensive browsers I have ever used. You can virtually change any behavior you don't like, from the appearance, with font size and customization, enabling Ctrl plus Tab to cycle through open tabs or hiding stuff you don't want in the URL bar, to the ad and tracking blocking policy, social media blocking or even spell checking. It's really customizable and that's a good thing, but it's also pretty tricky to find something when you're not used to it. Thankfully they have a search feature for the settings. Brave allows you to sync all these settings, all your browsing history, bookmarks, passwords, extensions, themes or tabs between devices, which is a required feature these days for a modern browser. This syncing capability is encrypted, and Brave doesn't have the keys to decrypt the data, which is a nice touch. You can simply add more devices to the sync list by flashing a QR code, or typing a phrase generated on the fly. Brave also has a host of nice features like pinned tabs, access to all Chrome extensions, or the ability to create web apps, but these are more linked to the fact that they use Chromium as a base than to specific developments Brave did themselves. Now in terms of privacy, Brave uses what it calls shields. So these shields are basically your tracker protection and your ad blocker, and these seem pretty effective. In all my browsing, I basically never saw a single ad. Well, that is a single ad on the web pages I used. Brave offers you to receive ads as notifications, entirely comprised of ads for various crypto-related services. These ads are handled by Brave, and each ad will net you some small amount of BAT, the crypto token Brave uses to earn money. These tokens can then be either paid to content creators, if they've enlisted in the Brave Rewards program, or automatically contributed each month to selected creators of your choosing, or just kept on your wallet and sold or exchanged. Now this feature has me pretty conflicted, because on the one hand, using an ad blocker and not seeing ads on the web is a personal choice. This is something that might hurt creators, myself included, but it's a personal decision. If you want to block all ads on the internet, you're free to do so. It's your browser, it's your browsing experience. On the other hand, Brave does that by default and takes the choice away from the user. The second issue I have with this is the BAT, the Basic Attention Token. The value of this thing fluctuates like crazy, like all cryptocurrencies. And it's the user who decides who gets those BAT, if anybody. This is a good thing on paper, but it will never replace having dedicated ads on your website or on your videos. Because if the user decides that you don't get anything, they've watched your content for free and you're not getting any money. So this BAT system, even if everybody was using Brave, 
could not replace the earnings that you could make as a creator on YouTube with the YouTube ads or on your own website, your own podcast with your own ads. I don't think it's a viable solution. Now, it feels a bit off and it doesn't really feel right to me as a system, but it might be because half of my revenue comes from ads. Don't tell anyone, but the other half comes from super illegal activities like contraband cheese and bread. Now you can, of course, turn off the Brave Reward system and never see any ad. In that case, you'll still have the ad blocker enabled as well. On top of the ad blocking capabilities, Brave also has a built-in Tor browser. You can open links in a new private window using Tor. It basically routes your query to various Tor servers, effectively hiding your IP address from the website you're visiting. This mode also switches your search engine to DuckDuckGo for the duration of the session, as other search engines can have issues with Tor routing. Brave also upgrades to HTTPS by default when available, so even if you type an insecure address and the website doesn't force a redirection to HTTPS, you will still browse more securely. So in the end, all those privacy features are nothing that you couldn't do yourself on other browsers, either through extensions or through a basic configuration that you can apply directly in the settings. But Brave does it for you by itself out of the box, which is a nice touch because you're not going to waste any time setting it up and you can make sure that when you install your browser, you are browsing safely and privately by default. Now let's take a look at the speed claims. We're going to compare Brave 1.25 to Chrome 91 and Firefox 89, basically the most latest versions that I can install on my distro at the moment I'm making this video. Running Basemark Web 3.0, Brave got a score of 1554. Chrome got 1686. For reference, Firefox got 1045. In case you're wondering, higher is better. So in there, Chrome takes the lead with a large margin, Brave comes second, and Firefox lags way behind, as expected. But this browser benchmark doesn't really accurately represent a normal browsing session. It's just gonna give basic tasks one after the other to the browser and see how long it takes it to complete. The speedometer test, though, is designed to measure the responsiveness of web applications in a web browser on multiple JavaScript frameworks, and that's going to be a bit closer to real life. On that benchmark, Firefox got 117 runs per minute, Brave got 126 runs per minute, and Chrome got 157. Now, using the dev tools of Brave and Chrome, loading The Verge.com, which is a kind of a heavy site, Brave took 709 milliseconds and Chrome took 4.29 seconds because it had to load the ads in after the fact. On OMG Ubuntu, Chrome took 3.26 seconds and Brave only took 1.22. And finally on gaming on Linux.com, Brave took 1.26 seconds and Chrome took 1.35. This last website has no ads in, which means that the performance is basically identical between the two Chromium-based browsers. And this limited test run seems to confirm that Brave's like speed lead is not due to any technological advancement in the engine itself. It's just because Brave blocks ads and Chrome does not by default. If you add a, an ad blocker to Chrome or any other Chromium browser, you'll probably get similar performance. Brave is just another Chromium browser. Now, imagine sharing your rendering engine with Edge. Ooh. Now, in a more subjective manner though, Brave feels really nice to use. Pages load super fast, scrolling is smooth, you never see any hiccup, any stutter, and I really didn't see any page not compatible with the browser, which is not the case with Firefox, where sometimes some web pages just won't load correctly, some buttons just won't act because people just don't test their websites for Firefox anymore. Now, let's move on to the search engine. So, Brave Search is just in beta for now, and it's based on the Tailcat search engine, which I personally never used. It uses its own index and doesn't use any other search engine's results. Engines like DuckDuckGo or Ecosia use Bing to get search results or supplement their own index. Startpage uses Google search results, but completely anonymized. But Brave Search just stands on its own. Well, that's up to a point. Brave does use Google and Bing to supplement their search results when they feel that the, the results that they are providing isn't up to par, specifically for images. The nice thing is, in the menu, Brave will tell you how much of the results that you got served are coming from Bing and from Google, and all of the queries that they submit to these search engines are completely anonymized, so none of your personal data is coming to another third party, which is pretty cool. So I've been using Brave Search for about a month now, 
and the results are quite impressive. Simple searches won't give you any trouble. You get good quality results, at least in English and in French. You get snippets from Wikipedia when they're relevant. You get ratings for apps drawn from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And you get small cards that correctly identify the type of content you're looking for, for example, with recipes. You even get suggested questions related to what you're looking for. Look, she started asking questions about what happened to dad, okay? Even more technical searches seem to return suitable results. I don't know for how long the Tailcat search engine had been running for, it looks like 5 years, but it seems that was enough time to develop a solid algorithm and index that Brave implemented very well. I do have one complaint though, and that's the speed. Brave search feels noticeably slower than DuckDuckGo or Google Search. It might just be because they're still in beta and haven't deployed a complete server infrastructure though. It also implements the bangs feature from DuckDuckGo that lets you type an exclamation point followed by one or more letters to directly search in another website's search engine, be it Google, Stack Overflow, Twitter, Reddit, Steam or thousands of others. On Brave, I couldn't get a list of the available ones, but I could type exclamation G to search directly on Google or exclamation Y to search on Yahoo, so I'd expect more to be available. I just don't know about them yet. Now it still feels extremely weird to say that you're banging Google. I don't want to do that. In terms of other searches, Brave's image search works well with the ability to filter by size, color and transparency or layout, even though it lacks a filter to only show images under copyleft licenses, like what DuckDuckGo offers. You can also search through news and videos, and both yield good, solid results. Finally, you can change the theme to a dark mode and set links to open in new tabs. Now, it's a very complete, very robust, and very reliable search engine for a first beta. It's, it's actually very good, and I can see myself keeping that as the default search engine even after this experiment has ended. Okay, so where does all of that leave us? Brave offers a very private browser out of the box with cookie protection, fingerprinting protection, tracking protection, and whatever, ad blocking. It's all customized out of the box. It's nothing that you could not do on other browsers, but here it's all packaged like in the base browser that you're gonna use, which is a nice touch. Now, the addition of a robust search engine, even though it's still in beta, is a really nice touch because Brave Search, even though it is in beta, still gives me better results than the other alternatives that I have tried, including Quant, Ecosia, or DuckDuckGo. It's really reliable, and even though you can use the bang feature to bang Google, I really rarely ever needed it. Now, if they just can make sure that it just searches a little bit faster, I think it would be perfect. Now, there is still the elephant in the room, which is Brave uses Chromium. And you might not care at all about this, but personally, I still think of Chromium as a Google-first technology. It might be open source, but Google is its main contributor, and they are the ones maintaining it and deciding what goes in. Which means that overnight, Google can decide which technologies are going to get adopted by the World Wide Web, and which aren't, because Chromium has a huge monopoly, and using Brave only reinforces that monopoly. This huge monopoly might already be done and over, and maybe I cannot affect it in any way. But it still scares me, and there is not enough of a difference between Brave and Firefox for me to really want to move out from Firefox. Now there's also this basic attention token thing, which I'm not a big fan of, but remember, half of my revenue comes from ads. Basically, if you don't care about Chromium, and if this crypto thing doesn't scare you off, then I'd say Brave plus Brave Search is probably the best combo for web browsing right now. It's probably the fastest browser out of the box, even though you can replicate it. It's probably the most private out of the box, even though you could replicate it. And the search engine is really top notch. If you don't care about Chromium or crypto tokens, go Brave, it's great. In my case, I'll stick to Firefox for now, but Brave Search is gonna stay the default search engine for a while. We'll see how long that lasts. Now, this video was made possible by Slimbook, so if you're looking for a Linux pre-installed laptop or desktop shipping worldwide with any keyboard layout that you want for any price point or any role, any task that you want to throw at it, check the link in the description and look at their devices. I only use their stuff these days and I can only recommend them. And that concludes it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you didn't enjoy, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. You can also watch all of these videos on Odyssey if you don't like YouTube. And if you want to help support the channel and make this a full-time job, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote for the next topics I'll cover for $1 a month. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.